This episode was funded by our Patreon backers. Without their generous support, this episode could not have been made. Please consider becoming one of our patrons today. I've decided to resurrect a little tradition, bringing you poor people along with me on a trip. It's been a while. The last time I did this was on a trip to the same place I'm going now, Oslo. And the reason I thought I would bring you along is that I'm going on a very, very, very new airline that I've never flown on before, Norse. Uh, they are a Norwegian airline born from the ashes of Norwegian long haul. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. It's not very often I get to travel on a new airline, so I thought maybe what the hell, I'll document it. And I'm going for pleasure, which is a weird thing for me. I don't do it very often. And yeah, like I said, it's not very often that you get to experience a new airline. Uh, they've only been flying really for just a couple of months on this route. They are a low cost, long haul airline, but they do this route between Gatwick, where I am now, and Oslo to keep slot rights, which is a complicated and expensive way for airlines to make sure they can keep flying in and out of cities. I'm at the My Lounge in the South Terminal, which has this wonderful outdoor area where I'm currently freezing my nips off. It's a nice little feature. I'm glad more airlines and more airports are doing this. It's um, nice to be able to get outside even when the weather is minus two as it is right now, but it's gonna be even colder in Oslo. So anyway, come along, we'll see what it's like. I have no expectations of this airline or this trip. So we'll see what we can see. So now we saw actually the resurrection of Norwegian long haul. Norwegian short haul still exists. Norwegian long haul uh, went bankrupt during COVID. The chairman of Norwegian is now the CEO of Norse Atlantic, and these are all old Norwegian airplanes. You can tell by the by the seats. It is a low cost long haul, so they're putting pressure on the cartel that runs across the Atlantic, so BA, American, and to an extent Delta and United. And anybody that puts pressure on those guys price-wise is good by me. So they've only been operating for about four and a half months in North Atlantic, and so far I'm, in, I'm impressed. The planes are spotless and brand new. Everybody's very friendly. The seats are, are comfortable. There's no business class or first it's just this cabin this with premium fee i don't know what the food's like we'll find out it's only an hour and 50 to oslo so i'm not expecting great things but so far i think uh, i think they've done a good job and again anything or anyone that is putting price pressure on those big boys that run the atlantic is is always going to get my confidence Oslo, it's my third or fourth time here. I like it here very much. People are friendly, it's very beautiful, the food is amazing. But this is the first time I've been here in the winter. It's very, very, very cold. My wife is from California, but went to university in Colorado, so this is easy for her. But for me, not so much. So I'm very glad I have these wonderful things given to me by Joseph Tame, or introduced to me by Joseph Tame. Joseph's given me many gifts through the tenure of our relationship, but this is by far the most useful. You buy them in 7-Eleven in Japan. I'm sure you can buy them everywhere, but the Japanese ones are, are better because they're Japanese. And it's just a little pack. And when you expose it to air, some sort of chemical reaction happens. I don't know what, I probably don't want to know. And it heats up really, really warm and it's sticky. So what you're supposed to do, as Joseph instructed us, is place it in the small of your back on the piece of clothing closest to your skin. And it sits there and keeps you warm for 12 plus hours, at least 12 hours. And that is how I'm staying alive right now. Don't laugh. She's bundled, this is easy for her. It's not easy for me. I am a thermal wimp. But these, look at my hands. They're all red. These are keeping me alive. I can't recommend them enough for cold or even moderately mild weather, if you're anything like me. Shut up. Nine 
45 on an Oslo morning. The sun has only just come up, but it is, it's a beautiful time of year to be here. Christmas, the Christmas markets are in full swing. Glog is being consumed at every angle. And they really kind of go large for Christmas here, which I, which I love, I'm a big fan of Christmas. And there's always, as you may have seen from the Oslo vlog I did five years ago, great breakfast pastry options in Oslo. Our Northern European brothers and sisters have truly harnessed the awesome power of cinnamon and sugar as a potent breakfast combination. But this time of year, you get seasonal varieties like this. This uh, beautiful Advent roll, whose name I mispronounced so many times in the bakery that I'm not even gonna try and do it again. If you are from the west of England, you will know this as a revel bun, saffron bun. Uh, saffron, incredibly, used to be grown in the west of England in Cornwall and Devon. And it's a, almost identical. It's a yeast leavened kind of bread uh, with raisins. They'd make it with currants in the UK. Unlike the revel bun in the UK, the Norwegian version is um, not made with cinnamon or sugar, weirdly, but it is delicious. It's only available this week, the week of Advent. So it's uh, kind of a fun little diversion from the otherwise unhealthy relationship I have with anything starting with the word cannel, which is Norwegian for cinnamon. Love a good Christmas market. Dan Hot one in Oslo, which was wonderful and lovely. This is a bit different than one here in Stockholm, but just as great because you can get this hot wine. I love wine. It's even better when it's hot because it's minus seven degrees outside right now. Their version is called Glug. Same in Norway. We call it mold wine in England. This is a little bit different though because it's got a cinnamon, a couple of almonds floating in it, which I, I'm going to eat. I don't know if you're supposed to. You also get a neat little gingerbread biscuit as well. But uh, it's, I, I really love Christmas markets. I think they bring a city to life and our Northern European brothers and sisters do them extremely well. So, because they have hot wine. The more hot wine you drink, the better Christmas market gets. That's science. Well, like I said, it's, it's great being in a new city, relatively new city, I've only been here briefly once in the past. During the holidays, we discovered those wonderful buns in Oslo, and I was pointed in the direction of this stuff uh, here in Stockholm, Julmust. I'm assuming I'm gonna say that wrong. This is apparently such a popular drink during this period of the year that sales of Coca-Cola dropped by over 50% during the holiday period because everyone is switching to this stuff. I think this is kind of like the supermarket version of it, but from what I gather, I never tried it before, I'm gonna do it right now. From what I gather, it's a little bit like root beer and the syrup that, it's very difficult to open. The syrup that it's made out of is only made by one company, but how it's then prepared by all of the, the various purveyors uh, means it can taste quite different, but um, if you've ever had your grandmother's cough syrup, that's kind of what it smells like. Oh, a little bit like root beer, a little bit like Dr. Pepper. It's nice, and apparently, I think Yulmus means eff effectively not yet fermented, and from what I gather, people will buy this in December and then store it for a whole year and then drink it the following December, and it will have a completely different taste and maybe a little bit more of a kick to it, I don't know. It kind of feels like this is the kind of drink that would, but um, it's rather nice, actually. I'm glad to be participating in another Scandinavian Christmas tradition. I'm gonna make this a little mission of mine to do them all before I leave. Good stuff. Well played, Sweden. <laughs>